and welcome to round two of the Parenting Roundabout podcast for the week of July 11th. I'm Katherine Haleko, and I'm here with Terry Morrow. Hello. Usually on this podcast, we talk about parenting issues and ghosts, but once a week, Terry and I like to get together to discuss TV, movies, books, and other entertainment topics, because it's nice to talk about something other than parenting for a change. So this week, we continued with season two of Only Murders in the Building, and we also traveled back in time just a little to start season one of Rutherford Falls. So let's start with Only Murders in the Building. This was episode three of season two, and it was called The Last Day of Bunny Folger. So sort the, of an unusual one. Although yes. They've had single character specific things in season one. Right. And, you know, they, they sort of made it seem like it was the, the podcasters um, kind of reconstructing. Right. Bunny's last day, but they had a. There was a lot of information presented that they could not have. Yes, had yes. access to. So well, it's the most I've liked Bunny in the entire series. Yes, <laughs> yes, they did make Bunny a lot more sympathetic. Very much so. I mean, I would not want anybody to break into my house and set up a surprise party in my living room no. when I was not home. <laughs> that is out of line. <laughs> Don't do that. I did very much enjoy Howard taking notes of the entire thing. <laughs> the altercation. As having, has, have, having been a recording secretary myself from time yes, to time. Yes, me like, too. I write down everything. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'm just now thinking uh, her good friend, Uma, I think uh-huh. is her name, was not at that meeting. No. So I guess she's okay. not on the board. She's just her right. friend. The yeah. meeting was a... So not so much a port party as a board meeting. Right. Well, it's kind of both. <laughs> yeah. But uh, a, a rubbing it in sort of party. <laughs> yes. You're out of here. <laughs> <laughs> to which her response was, never mind, I am not out of here. <laughs> yes. yes. Which displeased Nina, the extremely pregnant person who is taking over her Yes. Daughter. And but that is clearly it. Clearly a red herring at this point in the series. Yes. And we still have Howard with his unexplained bruise right, on his was not eye. there at the uh, um at the board, board meeting. meeting. Right. So, and we now know why uh, the bird is saying, "I know who did it." Because mm-hmm. Bunny said that in what context did she say that? Um, she was watching something on TV. Okay. Wasn't she? I think so. Yeah. But, uh, poor Bunny. Yeah. It was, it was funny because my husband was reading something in the paper about that actress and, and the show. It was like, I mm-hmm. guess, an interview with her. And I said, oh, yeah, she was killed at the end of season one, and now she's back as the voice of the bird. And it says, well, it says she's still in it. And then... <laughs> this then this episode, episode. Yeah, she's still in it she's still in it <laughs> yes. flashbacks thank you for flashbacks yeah it's i mean they had at least one more season of a job right and they had they had flashbacks of tim kono who was the right the dead person yes that actor got some screen time right so i now that i like bunny a little bit better won't mind seeing her again and the, yeah. the whole the whole thing at the end where she goes to you know, celebrate with them, and they don't understand that's what she's doing, and close right. the door in her face, and then she cries and goes back to her room to be murdered. Yeah, it's a little brutal. It's very sad. Yeah, but you can also see why they would not have thought that she would want to come in. And- <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Although the gesture of her bringing them champagne, champagne. was yes, I believe if somebody should brings have been you champagne, it. you invite them in. Yes. Allow them to say no. Yes, exactly. But they give her merch, so. <laughs> so that explains why she was wearing that merch when yes. she died. Right. Uh, Which I guess I didn't, I mean, I knew she was wearing some kind of tie-dyed sweatshirt, but yeah. I didn't connect it to the merch. No. Had you until... seen the merch previously? I don't know. Um but remember that you know tie dye guy was a was That's a whole right. thing last That's why it's a last shirt. season. Yeah, should we have merch, Catherine? 
<laughs> well, you did make I made us, mugs one time. You made with mugs. Just three of us. <laughs> <laughs> and you and made pens. pens. Yeah. That stopped working almost immediately. <laughs> but we have not expanded the merch out. There hasn't quite been an outcry. <laughs> If there was, we'd be happy to oblige. Right. I was always going to do some cafe press stuff, and then it just was hard to set up. So I thought, yeah, we'll do this another day. Right. But uh, <laughs> certainly we do not have hoodies, a pile of hoodies inside our door to pass out or whatever. Right. Whatever eager fans stop by. There's nobody down in the in the uh, courtyard with a big display of burnt <laughs> for us. Yes, you can see why that would upset Madam Board President. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Merch in the courtyard. Oh, no. <laughs> but, so she inherited the job from her mother, who we have now met. And Right, which is not usually the way board... <laughs> no, I wouldn't think, but... Board presidencies work, but... Well, I suppose. <laughs> the, for the sake of... Maybe maybe at the at the point at which that happened, it was... Or at least in the Arconia. Yes. But, um, maybe. I so. mean, definitely you can, I can see inheriting the apartment. Right. Um, but. Well, maybe in inheriting the apartment, she inherited right, the Right. Maybe too. it came with the job. That's and, true. And where does Shirley MacLaine live now? I feel that she lives in some kind of like assisted living kind uh. of deal. And I think that when they showed Bunny on the phone saying like, this again? No, you can't have the painting. Stop calling. I feel like that was oh, so her mother. She's the one who wants the painting because they were looking through all of Bunny's papers and stuff that they stuffed into a bag. And boy, if right. they came to my house and just stuffed random stuff in the bag, would they have a ton of useless things? <laughs> <laughs> it's convenient that, that all sorts of things that are actually clues just happen to be sitting on right. the desktops. And they had about two minutes to... Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you could definitely fill a bag. bag of crap in my house, but it would not be useful. <laughs> right. It would be, you know. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know if... Ten years if I, I don't know if I think Bunny's mother is the one who sent that note, but I, I feel like she's, so. the, she's the one that was on the phone. Oh, could be. Why is, is everybody interested in the painting right at this moment? Helen? Yeah, all of a sudden. It's a so, good question. That is a good question. And presumably the... The clue when she died was not Charles or even his father, possibly, but the painting that she was referring to when she said Right. Could be. Uh, but we shall see. Who knows? Yeah. Who knows? But it was nice to take a break from people accusing them of stuff to... Yeah, accusing the main trio, the main characters yes. characters of stuff. Mm -hmm. Nice to get a week off from that. Right. And see something different. And see a different side of Bunny. Different side of Bunny. Yes. Mm -hmm. oh. And her bird. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Do we know she had a bird last season? Did the bird put in any appearance? I guess we were I, never in her apartment. Yeah, I don't recall seeing the bird last time. So. <laughs> it seems a little convenient, but that's... <laughs> right. But I, and I do know that birds are long, long-lived yes. and loud. So. Right. Was it her mother's bird also, or is it just her bird? Oh, good question. Mm. I don't know. She probably got it when she was like six, and she's still <laughs> stuck with it. <laughs> and now Oliver is stuck with it. Now Oliver is stuck with it. Wow. Which, do you think that that was really in Bunny's will, or do you think that was just Uma deciding to stick it to him? <laughs> yeah, me too. But you never know. Maybe it could have been Bunny sticking it to him. So. Right. But, I mean, I feel like Bunny, in her way, cared about that yes. bird, so That's she ne wouldn't That's necessarily true. have, you know, foisted it off on Oliver. True. So. True. And we don't know how recent her will is, whether it was at a time when she was on good terms with him, yes. maybe. But I think it's just Uma saying. Probably she left it to Uma and Uma saying, no thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Who can I give it to to annoy? <laughs> oh, yeah, this guy. <laughs> but perhaps that will be a plot point later on. Maybe there's something in the bottom of the bird's cage Ooh, that's a clue. I could see that. Yes. Well, but we'll... Maybe some kibble. Yes! <laughs> this is the next Your mystery we're going to get cabinet. these guys to solve. 
<laughs> yes, only only murders in the building season three. Why is there kibble in random places in Catherine's house? <laughs> It'll be a bond run. It will. Oh, goodness. <laughs> well, shall we turn from that to Rutherford Falls? Let's. Okay, so this is a show that uh, Mike Shore of Good Place and Parks and Rec and The Office fame has a part in. I mean, he he wrote the first episode. He helped write the first mm-hmm. episode. He's like a producer, but I don't think he's super involved beyond that. Yeah. So, anyway, this is a sitcom that's on Peacock, and it's about two childhood friends one is nathan played by ed helms and the other is reagan played by jana schmeidling i don't know if i'm doing that wrong but um so he is a descendant of the founder of this town and Uh he's all about you know preserving the memory of nathan rutherford his ancestor and was Reagan it, was it is Nathan a member. Or was it Lawrence? Well, Lawrence. I'm sorry. Nathan is Ed Helms, yes. and Lawrence is Lawrence is the founder is the, the town, ancestor. Who his brother is named after. Yes, his brother who I believe played obnoxious uh, guy in the season of The Good Place when there was the like obnoxious sexist guy who they had to make. Be nice. I think. He oh was yes. Now he wrote a book while he was there. Was he a golfer or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I now I remember. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think that's the same guy. Yes, because he was in the good place. And when I looked at the picture of him, I said, I think that's who that is. Anyway, yeah, yes. Brother plays a very okay. small part, so we shouldn't be talking about him. Back right. to your summary. Um. So Reagan is a member of the Minishanka Nation, which. You know, was there first <laughs> before before Lawrence Rutherford showed up, uh-huh. um, and she's also trying to preserve the artifacts and memories of her community, and it's not going as well for her as it is for Nathan. Yes, and then he goes viral as a just kind of freaking out. Of, at the townspeople, mm-hmm. and that's kind of where we end episode. Yeah, one. there's some business about a statue that is in the middle of a street, and so people mm-hmm. who aren't familiar with the area regularly hit it, and the mayor wants to move it, and he says, no, no, it must be on that exact spot because something significant happened there, and then his friend Reagan talks him into letting it go, and so he does, but then the townspeople, very much like Pawnee townspeople, uh, mm-hmm. you know, uh, make all sorts of other, say all sorts of other things about it and get his back up. And then he insists the statue stay and he goes on this huge rant, which of course, since it is happening in present day, immediately is recorded by everybody with their phones and goes viral and causes problems for the corporation that I guess his family owns. And his brother says, oh no. And so we can kind of see where it's going from here. Right. It remind number one. It reminds me of early Parks and Rec when it wasn't Parks and Rec yet. Mm-hmm. The first season of Parks and Rec. You know, not beloved. <laughs> and right. So possibly this will go on to find its groove, and I will like it better. Second mm-hmm. thing is, are Ed Helms and that actress who plays Reagan supposed to be the same age? Cause yeah. they don't look the same age to me. He looks significantly yeah. older than her. So when he started talking about when you were in fourth grade, I thought, well, was he her teacher? <laughs> and then they're talking about how they known each other from childhood. And if if that actress is the same age as Ed Helms, then I want her beauty routine because she looks right. significantly younger to me. Doesn't she? I right. think I've heard other people yeah. talk about this. That, hmm, I, that's a, like a... A real, huh? Yeah. Right at the very center and heart of your show, and one so easily avoided. Right. So, I don't know about that. And third, it's like, kind of ripped from the headlines, 
Mm-hmm. And not that there aren't good points to be made and all, but I duck out of Twitter conversations when they get like this. What else you got? <laughs> Do we really need to watch X number of episodes about this sort of thing? I'm not uh-huh. sure I'm there for it. Right. I will give it a, a, another try. I mean, certainly everybody involved in it is talented. And it's not a hard half hour to sit through. It's just like this. <laughs> this is what we're going right. to do? Okay. Right. Um, so I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, hopefully I'm, this is just I'm like the inciting. Sure a little rope or whoever yeah. is. is like Morgan, I saw Morgan Sackett's name go by and other Parks and Rec adjacent people. Right. But... Yeah, hopefully this is just kind of the inciting incident, right. and then it'll get going. I'm, I'm um, fine with it if we're gonna if we're gonna make everybody look foolish at some point, right? <laughs> if it's just gonna be about one side being ridiculous and everybody else being virtuous, oh my goodness, there is so much of that in the world already. Uh-huh, uh-huh, <laughs> I just. Uh-huh. <gasps> I will look for comedy elsewhere. Thank you very much. So we'll see. Uh It may. I mean, I'm sure with these creators, and there was a bit in this, you know, when the townspeople are going off on him, they're going off on him in ridiculous ways. And, you know, clearly the the guy who owns the casino is not doing what he's doing out of entirely virtuous motives. He's just using virtuous motives as a cover. Yeah. So... It seems possible that that is, that there will be comedy to go around Mm -hmm. um, and not just all at Ed Helms' expense, but, uh, you know, he sure does play big bumbling white guys pretty well, so. (laughs) Yes. That's easy pinata to bash. Right. So, I don't know. What did you think of it? Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely laughed at some parts for sure. Um, and I, I really like the Reagan character. Yes. Um, yeah, I really like just, that actress and she's doing a yeah. great job. It's just, maybe Helms has just been living too hard. <laughs> <All right. laughs> they need to just put the Simple Shepherd uh, uh, in moonlighting a screen in front of the camera before they show him. Filter over him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I like her a lot. Um, and also the, I don't think they showed him in this episode, but there's like a sort of, there's a Ira Glass type person oh. that, that comes along. They did show um, and the he, NPR like logo yeah. behind a desk somewhere. So was that him? Yeah. Okay. So and he and he was on um Shits Creek. Okay. He played Ted the veterinarian on Shits <laughs> Creek. Um so that's like another whole aspect that's that's coming. Like he's he's a radio reporter mm-hmm. um you know making a story out of this. Yeah. So yeah. So he's coming. Um but yeah so I I, I really enjoy the Reagan character and I do think, you know, especially in this first episode, there's a lot of like, why are they such good friends? Because, you know, he's just like whining about how, oh, his statue, blah, blah, blah. And, and she's stuck with her, you know, her little tiny room in the casino that, you know, everyone thinks is the gift shop. And does he not <laughs> like he's so clueless yeah. you know so like you said if it's going to be sort of one sided in that yeah. way that that might be a problem right. um because you can see you know he he's her cheerleader yes. he pumps her up which is great but also it, he seems real real dopey yes. you know not just failing to see right. what is happening. So Yeah. I have a limited so not- <laughs> possibly a limited attention span yeah. for that. But we'll see. Right. You know, it may right. and really their two their relationship does kind of only work if they're childhood friends. Right, exactly. But maybe she's a genius and started school at yet uh well no, <laughs> it would have to be <laughs> Before conception that she started school. So that's a problem. I, right. Just, I, I looked her up on IMDb and she does not have an age listed. So. Oh, interesting. Okay. I, hmm. 
Perhaps that shall be explained at some time. All right. Maybe he didn't start school until he was like 15. Or 20. <laughs> he's a, he's he was a slow starter. <laughs> right. uh, well, hmm. well, you know, we've it's often said, you know, the pilot is the pilot, and yes. it's it's often not a great indicator. We didn't even of, bother to call this anything coming. about pilot, just as though they were saying to us, "Yeah, don't pay too much attention." Yeah, just get through this one. And, <laughs> and we just get had to, to get this to sell it to the network. It's fine. Right. Or to yes. whatever it is. Are they just exclusively on Peacock? Yes, okay. it's only on Peacock. So, yeah, yes. I don't really think Mike sure has to sell anything these days, but you never know. What do I know? Right. Nothing. <laughs> yes. So, well, we we'll see. With it. We shall yes. give it some time. Right. So... Next week, we'll carry on with both. The Only Murders in the Building, the fourth episode of season two, is called Here's Looking at You. Mm. And then Rutherford Falls gets an actual title for its episode. <laughs> it is called Buckhart Lodge. All righty. It's not just called episode two. They didn't nope. have it like a, you know. She doesn't, like, she doesn't have much of a budget for her uh, museum. It could just be. Right. Like, we couldn't afford <laughs> titles. All right, so. Yeah. Sounds like so another quaint, quaint locale. Mm-hmm. And that's going to be it for our round two today. Please subscribe to our Parenting Roundabout podcast so you won't miss any of our episodes. We have something new for you every weekday. As always, you can find recaps, links, and an opportunity to comment on our website at parentingroundabout.com. Bye, Terry. Bye, Catherine. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye.